they can take for granted that women can do anything that the boys can do. And do it better. And do it in heels. Yeah. You often hear that women can do anything a man can do and that they can do it better. Now, if you're like me and you don't just believe things because some virtue signaling moron with a tie said so, you might stop and wonder, if women can do anything men can do, why don't they? According to the US Bureau of Labor Statistics, in 2015, there are approximately 149 million workers over the age of 16. The BLS categorizes those workers into more than 500 different occupations. The BLS also gives a split between the percentage of male and female workers in each category, except occupations that have less than 50,000 employees. What is most striking about this data is how vastly different men and women are represented in various occupations, and it puts into perspective just how ridiculous it is to talk about a pay gap based on a simple average of full-time workers' salaries without taking into consideration the kind of work men and women do. By way of illustration, of the 361 occupation categories with a gender breakdown, only 46 have a roughly even split. That is, more than 45% or less than 55% of any one gender. That's almost the same number of occupations that have a 95-5% to split. And of those occupations that are 95% or more dominated by one gender, there are only three occupations that are 95% or more comprised of women, but 42 occupations that are comprised of 95% or more men. And given the types of occupations for the roughly 200 with less than 50,000 workers, there would be a lot more jobs that are heavily skewed towards men. Now, most people know that women are underrepresented in STEM fields. How could you not, given the amount of bitching and whinging feminists do about it? But strangely, feminists don't complain about the fact that men are underrepresented amongst childcare workers or nurses. Of course, there is no problem here if you understand that this outcome is a result of personal choice. The only problem, at least for feminists, is that the vast majority of women don't make the type of choices feminists want them to. And if you have a look at the occupations women dominate, then you'll get a sense of what I'm talking about. No doubt some of these female-dominated occupations will come as no surprise. But feminists want you to believe that because of traditional gender stereotypes, women are forced into a narrow range of occupations and paid less. As stated previously, Feminists ignore the element of choice and the fact that market forces put different values on different types of work. So if you're passionate about social work, then I say go for it, but don't expect to be paid the same as a petroleum engineer. Now let's take a look at the types of jobs where women are significantly underrepresented. Firstly, we'll have a look at some of the engineering and IT fields and then have a closer look at the types of jobs that for some reason feminists don't complain about. You know, the dirty, dangerous, non-glamorous jobs that I think it's safe to say most women avoid. So first, some engineering and IT related occupations. The jobs highlighted here cover about 8 million workers. There are more workers in these fields, but the occupations shown here are the most heavily dominated by men. Now there's nothing stopping women doing these jobs. They don't require physical strength, but they do mostly require a university education. And given that greater numbers of women go to university and are graduating with more degrees, why don't we see more women in these fields? Well, I'm gonna go out on a limb and make a radical suggestion. Perhaps it's because they prefer other vocations. I know, it's crazy, isn't it? Men are more likely to be attracted to the IT and engineering sector than women. In the same way, women are more attracted to psychology and childcare. But let's just ignore all the evidence and chalk it up to institutionalised sexism. Right, feminists? 
Now we get into some of those dirty and dangerous jobs in the extraction and construction industries. And as you might expect, this is a heavily male dominated area. A lot of this work involves physical activity and can be dangerous. In the construction of just about any type of building or structure on the planet and the resources used for that construction, it is almost entirely done by men. And that could be one reason why of the 4,821 work-related deaths in the United States in 2014, 92% of them were men. Just another privilege of membership in the patriarchy. Installation, maintenance and repair occupations employ approximately 5 million workers in the US, 96.5% of which are male. Just about any type of repairer, technician or maintenance worker you can think of. So if men collectively decided to go GALT tomorrow, nothing would get built and nothing would get repaired or maintained. Your highways would turn to shit and every time something broke, you'd just have to buy a new one. And even after buying something new, there'd be no one left to install it for you. So in the production, transport and material moving occupations, there's a mix of the glamorous and not so glamorous. And whilst men might be the majority in the glamorous occupation of pilot, they are most dominant in the not so glamorous occupations, such as sewage treatment workers, garbage collectors, truck drivers, taxi drivers, and don't forget parking lot attendants, of which there are over 144,000 in the United States, earning an average salary of $22,500. Gee, I hope the tips are good. And finally, just some miscellaneous jobs heavily dominated by men. You know those pesky serve and protect type jobs like police and firefighters. Yeah, men can be violent, but they'll also be the first ones on the spot to help and protect you. They'll also get rid of pests, take care of your yard, and are also much more likely to be the ones to carry your bags, cook your food, and wash the dishes. So what's the point of all this? To denigrate women's contribution to the workforce? No. It's to simply push back against this narrative that always and everywhere women are wonderful. You see, telling yourself you're wonderful doesn't make it true. And telling yourself that you can do whatever a man can isn't the same as actually getting out there and doing it.